Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Warren and Julie Travel with us. We've got a special treat today, don't we, Julie? We do. We get to see Norm and Kat again. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited to catch up on their lives. These two are inspirational to many. They are one of our most watched views. Uh, you know, we'll probably end up passing 100,000 views at some point with theirs. I think it was on their previous video that we did with them when we were visiting in Antalya, Turkey. They are a couple living on Social Security traveling the world on their social security and i don't know how many people have decided to take the plunge because of things that norm and kat have shared and so we're doing an update with them yes previously they were living on twenty two hundred dollars a month on their social security so we're going to find out are they still sticking around to twenty two hundred dollars <laughs> a month here in 2024 and if we can uh, get their update on their on their status so at this point, um, Norm and Kat, how are you? Doing really well. Nice to see you. Thank yeah. you for having us. First off, it's nice to, to see people who we actually know, because obviously we had the chance to spend time together two years ago in Antalya, Italy, where we got a chance to break bread and and have some uh, personal meetings and conversations. And we're just glad to be part of your of your posse, man, because we love the life we live and we are hopeful that we can inspire other people to do it. And it's not always perfection, but it's always a lot of fun. And uh, we're gonna keep doing it as long as we have the ability to do it. That's fantastic. Um, you know, at this point, you guys have been traveling for, is it five years together? Actually, in a couple of weeks, it'll be five years to the day. We left February 17th from Los Angeles, and we have been on the, on the road ever since. We just left the Philippines, which was country number 42. So we had 42 countries over five years, and we are collectively, we had some countries before she and I started traveling, so we're at about 52 all together. And so, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We're in Vietnam right now, by the way. And you had not traveled out of the United States until you I were... had. <laughs> yeah well well i had been to about 12 countries before meeting him and he had been to i'd uh, been to a handful but it really wasn't until about 2016 that i really traveled internationally and that's when the light bulb went off and i went wow people are living to live not just uh you know living to work and i appreciated the fact that they live a much higher quality of life and they were doing it for a lot less money than what i was spending in california so when she and I met and saw that we had similar goals, it's kind of like that's when we realized that that made more sense. And neither one of us is getting any younger. So we might as well do it now while we still can. That's fantastic. And we're getting older, so we're still doing it. <laughs> and and so we're in Sicily today is because we, as for those of you that are tuning in for the first time, Julie and I, we travel full time with our dogs and we um, are currently in Europe and we'll be for quite a while. And we travel by car typically. Um now you two travel much lighter. Um, you guys are, are, are <laughs> yeah. basically got each other. airplanes, boats, whatever you can get your hands on, motorcycles to scoot around. Yeah. Um, so all you, the above. Yes. Yeah. You've been, you've been much more mobile this past a um, uh, couple of years, from what we understand. You you've been uh, jumping on more planes and doing boats and getting around. We. Go ahead. We started doing it to begin with probably when we were talking to you still, that we were doing it for about six weeks at a time. And that's when we talked about the $2,200 a month because we were able to get the really great discounts by staying for more than a month. And we still do that. But for the last year, we have been go, go, go. Yeah. So we've had a lot less um, opportunity to stay for a month and keep our costs down a little bit. So our costs went up a little bit higher than normal because of this last year. He can share a little bit. Yeah, Europe was kind of like the, our favorite footprint, especially where you particularly reside, which is over in the Balk, uh, Balkan area, the Eastern Europe. Mediterranean. And so we were there until the end of May. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever the case might be, since the end of May, we have not been anywhere for longer than a couple of weeks, except for when we were in Bali. We were in one specific location for 30 days. But for the most part, we have been staying for less than 10 days in a host of different places. And we've been on islands. You know, we, we went to Hawaii in September and until uh, earlier this week, we have been on island after island after island after island. So we kind of squeezed our budget a little bit more than we feel comfortable because there was a cruise in there and a couple of uh, long distance flights. We and... sort of hit our savings a little bit. We, <laughs> yeah. we don't normally do that. Yeah. But this last year, we knew we were going to have an 18 day cruise. We 
went to Hawaii, which is more expensive. We went to Australia, which is more expensive. We yeah. had a lot more, like we said, a lot more small stays. So you can't get the discount. You're paying a little bit higher for your rooms. But all in all, I think we really went over our budget for the whole the whole time. We only dug into our savings for fifteen hundred or two thousand, not much. Yeah. So it's it's still about the same. Just as we able to get back into where we're staying longer, it'll probably come back down to where we're more comfortable. Yeah. So you, you did a repositioning cruise, if I'm not mistaken. Also, we did. and yeah. what, what does something like that cost, and where did that start and go from from where to where? Interestingly enough, we learned something about that, and then he can tell you that where it went from. We paid twenty two hundred dollars a person, and that was for eighteen days, and we thought that was really amazing because for eighteen days you're usually talking about six thousand dollars probably. That covered our our of course our housing, and that covered our food, that covered our entertainment, and it covered us getting to and from, which for us was amazing because we stopped to stop in French Polynesian, so we went to Tahiti, Ratatea, and Morea. We went to New Zealand. Um, Auckland and um, Bay of and the Bay of Islands. So it was like an overall getting to go places I wanted to go that were definitely much more expensive to get to. So um, yeah, we left Honolulu uh, back in September, and we uh, picked up the flight. We I mean, we picked up the the cruise ship, and as she said, we eighteen days at sea, and then we landed in Australia. So that was a little bit of a budget buster, but we found out that. You know, interesting world of cruises that I've written a couple of articles for say. International Living and a few other magazines because it was a real educational experience. If you can wait until closer to the depart the departure time, you can negotiate some pretty sweet wait, deals. Yeah. Um, what we paid twenty two hundred dollars for, which we thought was reasonable, some people were paying somewhere closer to a thousand, even under a thousand. And when you figure that includes your lodging and your food, that, that brings your daily cost to a pretty decent amount. And the repositioning right. cruises are almost all trans-Pacific or transatlantic with stops along the way. So for people who really have the time, because it's not designed to be a, an expedient way of doing, but it's a leisure, right. leisurely way of doing it. And even though we had some concerns about seasickness and all that, well, we endured really well and we will probably do it again. Yeah, yeah. and I think... Um, yeah, it was it was really really awesome. I thought it was a great experience since we'd never done it. Um, we, we, I think we would like to do something like that. Unfortunately, because we travel with dogs, it makes yeah, it, it makes it harder. Yeah, until yeah. Cruises yeah. make uh, dog friendly cruises, we're we're kind of stuck with ferries that are about as as far as we're going to be able to do it. Um, and you mentioned as well, we travel a lot lighter. We are down to where right now. I have a twenty liter backpack. He has a forty liter backpack. I carry a small Kipling and he carries a, carries a small Columbia bag. Columbia bag. Yeah. That's what we have. Yeah. And wow. so that makes our travel so much easier because we take everything as carry on. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, when they say they want to check our bags, it's like, no, man, you got to understand this is everything we own. We aren't going to take any chances of having anything get lost. Now, with that being said, uh, we have a couple of cheat bags. We've got a bag in Turkey. With some uh, with some cold weather gear because we've not had any cold weather for a while, and, and we also have a bag in Albania. We were there for eight months, and so we have some kitchenware. And then, since we do have a tendency to ride motorcycles for a couple months at a time, we have a motorcycle bag in Romania, which is where we get our motorcycle from. But for the most part, now that we're in warmer temps, and that was designed, you know, we have one long pair of I have one long pair of pants. We don't have any jackets. We don't have any sweaters or anything else like that. So Sundresses. that makes that makes packing a whole lot easier. Uh, so you know, so, so, so you have to be stashed at different places around the world. So with you, friends, yeah. <laughs> like little stash bags. Yeah. And if you saw the bags again, yeah. Honestly, it wouldn't be a great loss because half the time we don't even know what's in them. Yeah. It's like okay, we left them. If we get them back, great. If we don't, no big loss. You know, our trip to Asia was, uh, we had a kind of a roundabout way of doing it because I said we started in, in Europe and Albania until almost June. And then we wanted to get to Asia because we really never gave Asia a chance. We were here for a little over two months back in 2020, just as COVID was hitting. And so we had to hightail it out of here and went back to the States. And like everyone else in the world, we got stuck where we were in Mexico. And so Asia is kind of like a little bit of a test to find out whether there's places here that we like, because if we do, this is highly affordable. As you know, Eastern Europe and the Balkans are highly affordable, much more than Western Europe. 
And over here, it's, it's highly it's affordable more as so. well. Even more so. And so as long as, and, and interestingly enough, the two concerns we had before getting to Asia, we were concerned about humidity and we were concerned about bugs and come to find out that we're not having trouble with either one. No, it's been really good. Now, I'm not going to say it's not warm and it's not humid at times, but what we've found, we've been here almost three months now yeah. and there's an incredible breeze. We were out walking. It was 93 degrees on the bike yesterday and the breezes and and it's just not that bad. There are moments where I'm like, okay, I'm hot, but it's it's not as overwhelming. When we were in Mexico, that was overwhelming. Yeah. That, that was just brutal in the summertime. Yeah. So to we're be, not so finding that. So about, we're, you're, you're talking about three months in Asia, not three months in Vietnam at this point. No, three months in Asia. Asia. Yeah. And we're going to be here through about probably. About a year, probably. Yeah, we should be here through the end of 2024. We'll know within a year. In Asia, not Vietnam. <laughs> no, not yeah. Vietnam. No, I mean we're going to be we're going to be here for another month, and then we're heading off to uh, Malaysia, and then we're going to do a series of steps to check out all the area to see if there's anything that really resonates. And with And then us. we'll be coming back to Vietnam again and taking the the train down the coast. So we're going to be hitting the lower part now and the up above part coming down after Hong Kong and Japan and up in there. Yeah. Oh, nice. So right now, over the last couple of years, you had mentioned your costs have gone up from the 2200. Now, of course, there's been inflation, Social Security amounts have gone up as well in the last couple of years. Uh, but you had disclosed to me prior to the call that you're running under 3000. So roughly in the $2,900 uh, range is what uh, you guys are averaging per month to have this type of lifestyle then, is that including yeah. these one-offs with the cruises and flights and everything? No, we, we well, dug we into said, savings. We, we did dug into savings for that. Yeah. That was about 2000, but the rest of it's all covered through social security. Yeah. And it's, I the think. Flights were also covered under social security? What is it? Were the flights also covered under your social security or is yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. No, so the so flights are in, yeah. I think, so, I think so the biggest. the cruise ship, 2900. Yeah, I, I, yeah, including everything. I think the biggest difference we have is that I was actually able to save money. When we first started traveling, was I was act, I was actually able to put money aside because our cost of living was less than what my income was. Well, over the years, you know, some things have gone up and um, we've been a little bit more active. We used to stay, as Kat said, for six weeks or longer at a time. But this particular 2023, we were on the go for over half the year and we're going to be on the go for this part well, too. And in the summer too, this last summer, we left some of the lower, um, more, the less expensive countries. And we went into Paris. We went to different places that in the summertime, they were more expensive. Yeah. So we could spend a little bit more one night than we did for like a week. Yeah. So we had moments, but then it sort of, it all evened out. So we really truly have only dug into our savings at all. For the cruise, pretty much. You know, for people who right. are watching that who might not be familiar with what the cost of lodging is, you know, our sweet spot is about 25 US dollars a night. But, you know, when we can find places for 25 US dollars a night, that 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 rocks. And we have found that to be the case a lot of places. But as she said, last year we had to go a little bit higher because we were traveling during the peak of summer through Slovak, through Slovenia, through Hungary and everything. And through Hawaii and what have you. And what I want to share, when we tell somebody that we stay for $25 a night, I have to tell you, they look at you and they think you're staying in the slums. Yeah. We're not. We're staying in nice Airbnbs and nice hotels sometimes. I would show you right next that we've got clothes hanging. We're in a cute little apartment. It's a little studio apartment with a loft above us. You can see behind us, we've got the bamboo. It's all the way. It's really cute. And it's just lovely. We have a little kitchenette, a nice bathroom, a, a comfortable bed. We, I'm very picky. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be wonderful, but as long as it's clean and a big enough room and we've got light and it's bright. So we stay in nice places. We just do, I do a lot of research for Airbnbs. I do a lot of reviews. Yeah. It makes a huge difference once you start learning what you're looking for and don't be afraid to ask, would oh. you take less? Are you willing to, you know, and ask, oh, we're in Asia. We didn't know this. Is there hot water? <laughs> because in Asia, <laughs> it's not common. Yeah. In the Philippines, we were on an island that there was no water, no Wi-Fi. They had blackouts. You didn't know if you're going to have air conditioning. So we were very lucky. It all turned out great for us. But you need to, to look into and explore. 
So, you know, but, but really and truly he's right. Our budget's about $25 a night mm -hmm. and, and less right now we're paying 20, the place we're in right now yeah. in downtown Saigon. Yeah. And we are right by the market, the big um, famous market. Um, I don't say it right. Ben Tang market. We're right around the corner from yeah. it. So we're in a great district one location. You just have to take the time to look. Yeah. And now I, I will also just to make sure people don't think that this is an impossible budget for these two. You know, Julie and I, we travel full time by car. We have our dogs. We stay in a lot of places all over Europe. We do have our home base in Montenegro, which uh, he referenced about us being in the Balkan area that we we have a home there that we go to um, and spend spend several months a year. Um, but you know, we are living, and, and it's not because we have to live on this budget, but we probably average out at $3,500 a month in yes. that bracket. Um, and that includes a lot of things like our health insurance that we have, our international medical health insurance that costs us a couple hundred dollars, like $240 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and you can email me about uh, international medical health insurance if you want to know what we have, because I am an agent in this bracket and be glad to send you links to sign up for international medical but, you know, it's not far fetched. So we are traveling. This is including our fuel, our gas, costs yeah. for our car, our mm -hmm. groceries. And we're running around uh, Europe predominantly. And, you know, we do Turkey time or time in Turkey, I should say. <laughs> and, um, and and so twenty nine hundred to flood around the world may sound crazy to those of you guys sitting in San Francisco or somewhere in the United States where you have this high cost of living. But it's not impossible it's not unreasonable um and and so yes. just to give validity to their story it's you know 2900 is an increase from their 2200 but it's due to lifestyle changes predominantly um and and here's the thing yeah here's the thing too that we have found and we tell people they say to us a lot of times you're so lucky you're traveling the world you're so lucky and we say to them it's not luck it's we, lifestyle it's choices, choices. We were willing to give up everything. We do not have a home. For us, we do not owe anybody anything. We we paid things off and we don't have all the extras. Yeah. We don't need all the extras. What we get to enjoy is this lifestyle because we don't have to have the rest of it. Now, there's no judgment towards anybody who wants that and that's their important things. That's awesome. But if you want this lifestyle, you can make it happen. You just have to choose what's important to you. And that's for us is doing what we're doing. You know, we're pretty lucky too, because we don't require, I'm going to put in air quotes, stability. And a lot of people want stability. They want something that they're comfortable with. The people's comfort zones are obviously of different yes. sizes. When I lived in California, I lived there for 40 years. I lived in Orange County before we left. And my rent at that time just increased to $2,300 a month. Now, at the time I had a car. I had insurance, I had this, I had that. So to live on $3,000 a month in Orange County was poverty level. I mean, these are the people who are barely getting by and are just real close to being you know, in trouble. But when you live the lifestyle that we lead without having a car, without having to worry about insurance, without having to worry about all those things, it gives us that much more buying power and uh, and better peace of mind. And Kat said, we don't have a lot of the accoutrements. You know, we'll we'll go and and uh, you know she'll find these places to get inexpensive clothes, and we don't have to get really high high quality stuff because we have to get rid of anyway. Everything's transitional. Everything yeah. is transient. You know, we if we, we move change our from, wardrobe. Yeah, if we go from where it's cold to where it's hot, then the cold needs to go, or we just leave it with somebody else. I'm continually finding little sundresses for nothing. And if I find something that I like, it's a nice change, then I just give it to whoever I'm staying with and they get to have, so it's a pay forward. So it's it's a choice. It's a true choice to how you want to live. Yeah. And you can have it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, but well, the, we mentioned yeah. in our last video with you that, uh, you know, it, it your wardrobe kind of, as, as you live this lifestyle, so oftentimes just, it's kind of, you buy clothes as being, disposable but you can buy clothes so cheap sometimes and yeah they are like it's turkey. almost like it's almost like, like going out to dinner you know you go out to dinner you spend your whatever you spend and it's gone He's, you know? he still has trouble with it because i'll say you know this doesn't what look right on you or whatever well we just got that yeah well you know what it was all i could find at the time <laughs> so now i found something that's nicer we need to give this to somebody else yeah so you really have to to 
work on changing yeah. your perspectives about what's important, what's not important. Yeah. At least we find that. Yeah, for anyone who's watching this, there's a major distinction between being a tourist versus being a traveler. And, you know, for all of our lives and for you guys too, you know, you traveled as a tourist and you go to a hotel and you take advantage of room service and valet service and you do all those things and you have X number of days and then you're done. You want to see everything and you go back and you need a vacation. Yeah, we go to places. I mean, here we are in Saigon and we kind of jokingly talked about this before the actual on-air interview. I walked right by the Imperial Palace, which is a historical place. And I had no motivation to go inside. Now, it might sound a little bit arrogant, but the truth is, is that I've seen so many palaces and so many churches and so many cathedrals that, you know, it's not about the attractions. The attractions are cool and some attractions are worth spending the money and for. And some and we want to go. Yeah. Like it, we, we just came from, uh, we just came from the island of Palawan in the Philippines and we did an island hop because it was something you do. You get out on a boat and you visit all the islands and you go snorkeling and you you see the beautiful scenery, things like that. And even that was fairly reasonable. Those are the things you spend money on, but to spend, you know, the kind of money that tourists spend on attractions. That's just, not something we do. Well, it's not in our budget or, or a desire level either. Or it's gift. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah just, like, it's... Like, like we, we are in the same mindset with you. We, this is our life. We're not tourists. Every yes. day. If we were tourists every day. Our budget would be 10,000 a month. You know, exactly. if you want to stay in a nice hotel and have room service, you know, this is not your lifestyle. You're This right. is where you are finding a place that's going to be your home for two weeks or two months. And you're living like a local. You go out to eat maybe 25, 30 percent of the time, not every meal. Um, yeah. We explored the craters of Mount Etna yesterday, Julie and I here in Sicily. We had a great time we doing the hiking trails, walking around, took, took our dogs cost nothing but yeah. if you wanted to take the gondola up to the very top crater you're yes. looking at 50 euros a person so you know that's 110 dollars for two people to take right. that up there you can do that if you want and but we had so much fun with the below part we yeah. were motivated to say hey we need to go do the 110 dollars uh, or 100 euro to yeah. uh, to do this gondola ride up um uh, so, yeah, I, I think sometimes as you travel like us and like you guys, you start to look at things a little bit differently because you've been exposed to so many things. And if you were here as a tourist, you would say, I'm here. I don't know when I'm ever going to get back. I've got to do this gondola ride. I don't right. care what it costs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, you know, we weigh the things, too. Like we're getting ready to go over to the island. Um, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I'm sure it's I think it's Phu Quoc. Phu Quoc. Phu Quoc. Yeah. It's an island here in Vietnam. And there is a... I don't know if they call it a gondola, yeah. um, but the goes across. It's one of the longest in the world. And you can't just take it and pay for the ride. You have to pay for the amusement park on the other side. And I said to him, this may be something that I want to spend the extra money on because it may be a once in a lifetime opportunity that, that I think I would regret. So for me, it's if I'll regret it, I neither need to get it or do it, you know, and there's not a lot of, of those things that I feel like, but this particular one, I'm like, I think I really want to take this this ride. Meanwhile, share with the uh, viewers, what are we paying per month? Oh, for the place we're staying at? Um, less, than three, 11, less than $300 a month. I think $258 we're paying for our month. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. This is on an Incredible. island. That's our weekly. <laughs> And we have a swimming pool. We yeah. have a nice little apart. Yes. This is on an island. On an island. To Vietnam. Yes. So we're paying less $250 a month. So that again, we just, we balance. And the other thing I wanted to say, and I may have said it in the last one, when you travel like we do, and we just have our backpack in our bag, we're not buying stuff to bring back home. We're not buying stuff to, so there's no extra cost. The only thing I buy is a piece of jewelry from a different country. So I have my little souvenirs from my different countries on, on what I wear. That's it. And I get little um, magnets, lightweight magnets for my children for the refrigerator. And that's really and truly all we purchase outside of our clothes and our food. Yeah. Well, you know, we when we first started, all right, so if I, if I step back in time, when we first started, we thought if we can keep our lodging to less than $1,000 a month, that's cool. And then we found out that we could do that. Every once in a while, we went a little bit over. And then we found that we could consistently get it for about $800 a month. And then when we went to Turkey and then we went to Albania, we got really spoiled because we were able to stay even less than that. 600. So now it's kind of like, you know, there's nothing in the expensive parts of the world that are compelling enough to make us want to spend 
$1,500 a month in lodging. And when all you're talking about is a room and a shower. And I want to say something else. This place that we're getting for a month in Fuqua, uh, Fuqua. Yeah. Okay. What we have found again. So we only needed it for 27 days because our plane leaves, right? So we need it for 27 days. For 27 days, it was close to 400. If we made it for the whole month, there was a month discount. So you do it for the whole month and you get the discount. Yeah. So we got a 45% discount by doing it for the month. And that's yeah. how we got it for 258. Yeah. So we, there are so we, many We have tricks. done that too. Good, good yeah. point. Yeah. You know, I think that the, the, the benefit of conversations like we're having together and the conversations that you have with other people like us is that we give people insight to things that they don't have any knowledge of. I know before that I ever started traveling, I didn't even know what I didn't know. Now we kind of have good insight of some of the shortcuts and we're still learning because the Probably. rules are always changing. Even something as simple as visa rules and visa laws and the, the expenses involved and everything. So the reality of it is, is that for people who are aspiring to live a more nomadic lifestyle, and I always tell people, you do not have to jump in with both feet like we did. Yeah. We we didn't have a house to sell. We had already done that years before. But you know, for people who just want to try this out, dip your toe in the water, do it for a couple of months. Travel for yeah. three months. Just rent your house out, keep it empty, whatever yeah. the case might be. But don't just try to hit nine different places over you know 15 weeks or something like that. Go somewhere and stay for at least 30 days and uh, get a feel for the area, the culture, the people, the food. You know, there, there's nothing worse than getting to a brand new town. And you probably experience it. You get to a brand new town and it's like everything is far into you and everything seems so this and everything seems so that. And within a couple of days, within a week, it's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the grocery store is right there. Oh, the gym's right there. Oh, that this is right there. It's like within a week's time, you're almost like a local and you walk by the same businesses and they're already waving to We've you. We've been here a week and they already know us yeah. at the coffee shop. They already see yeah. us. The guy knows exactly what coffee I want. Yeah. There is something to be said about staying. I like I like staying for longer. I mean, that's what I just said to him. Um, I think that we need to slow down for this next, you know, in Asia. Instead of trying to hurt, I said, we have no time limit. Yeah. He was sort of anxious to get back over the Balkans. And I said, let's just slow down and just stay a month at a time at least in the places we're going. That'll allow us to get the, the budget back down. It allow us to relax a little bit and really get to know each of the countries at each of the places that we're going. Yeah. So we may slow down a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, think, I think something that you brought up that I thought was, I think is interesting for people to realize when you slow travel and you start spending a month in a location, you start to feel like you get to know people, like you're a part of the community at times. Mm -hmm. And like, I know you don't have experiences with this norm, but like the barber that I would see would, would uh, wave at me. In I'm Turkey. sorry, what? But, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, you, you, you start seeing other people walking their dogs and yeah. you start to actually feel like you're um, may even be a part of it when you leave. And like, you almost feel like you have to explain to people why you're not going to be around anymore. <laughs> because you, you, you start to know the vendors. And, and so in a way, it's like you start to develop roots when you travel slow, which can be um, something you don't ever experience when you're a vacationer and you just show right. up and you know, the bellhop's not going to miss you when you're gone. The front and, something I wanna, well. and something I want to piggyback on top of that too, you do make friends on yes. the road because people sometimes think, oh, it's lonely. And what if I'm by myself? What if I'm a single, uh, I'm a single man? And you know that's a whole other conversation, which we don't need to get into. But even the two of us traveling together, we meet people, we make friends, we've made friends with you. And when, when we were in Australia, we we have people who say, Come you, back, you, stay you, with you, us. You've got a room here. We Genuinely, got, we yeah. just have, we just this week met some friends here in Vietnam that we spent two nights with in Australia. And they said to us, Your room is available whenever you come back. Yeah. We have three other couples the same way in Australia who have invited us. It, it's we're now meeting people who are like opening up their homes to us, which yeah. is really phenomenal. I mean, it's just been so cool. And I wanted to share just this little story today. We are living in a, a 10 story complex and we're on the ninth floor. And it's um so interesting because the hallways, these are small little studios. So the hallways let people have their stuff out in the halls as well. And there's a little lady sitting out in the hallway doing manicures. So I walked by and I said, manicure and she looked at me and she said yes I said how much turns out to be a hundred dong which is four dollars right okay fine so we're about to get my manicure 
it's a manicure pedicure for $4. And it was maybe the best thing I couldn't believe she's been doing it for 20 years. It was so unbelievably how good she did. And I'm like, you don't get these experiences. You just, it's so cool. Well, well, and the building is like a community. It's like, yeah. it's like the old days when people, you know, would go out on the street and they'd sit on the stoop and they talk to the neighbor, which in California, we would never do such a thing because, you know, all you do is wave at your neighbor from your car. Uh, but here, when you live in a community building like this, there's like, I think they've she... got tables out in the hallway and they're all having breakfast together and they offer you food. And it's just, yeah, this yeah. is an incredible way to experience the world. Yeah. And I just encourage anybody who's even thinking about it, you know, don't be afraid. It, it's, it's one day at a time, but you learn it, you know, you, you just have fun and you just explore and have a great time. Yeah. I, I yeah. think one of the things we we do have to touch on is tourism and, and being a tourist versus living like this, yeah. because so many people Different. have a romantic idea of this that, oh, you know, they don't think I've got to do laundry. I've got to do things, you know, it's, oh. I'm good. I'm going to see everything and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to see these castles, you know, and, and then they get there and they're, they're let down because it's a lifestyle now. Yeah, it's it's a true, living. Yeah. Yeah. You're living. Yeah. You have to cook. You have to do things. And so, you know, I mean, I, I think you have to go in with the right mindset to do what we are all doing. Yeah. Julie, I think the other thing that people don't realize is, at least for me, so it's been five years, you either grow together or you grow apart. You either grow up or you don't. Yes. And for us, we have grown together. We actually got married three months ago. But you you grow to you you grow up. You have to learn. Like you said, there's work involved. There's sometimes we'll have to spend three nights figuring out, okay, do we want to go on this flight over here? Is it cheaper to go this direction? Yeah. Is the temperature up here going to be warmer? Do we need to go down here? Flight Wait a homework. second. This one doesn't allow us to stay long enough. It's 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 there's definitely work involved. Yeah. But, but it's there's fun. it's fun work, you yeah. know. So you just and you have to learn, and you know as well as I do, you have to work together. Definitely. And you're with each other 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> so so let, let's let's bring up something here. When you're traveling and slow traveling, one of the real benefits to it is that if you have a bad weather period of time, you're there long enough for the bad weather to go away and experience something um you know I, I i think people are quick to make bad judgment calls i we talked about a, a person that norman and cat and julie and i have seen uh a thing about a place in Novisad that julie and i love the city of Novisad. uh you down in the pedestrian area is fantastic there's the petrobarden fortress areas around the danube and we've gone back there several times and we've done many videos about um the area but did they, we saw a review online that a person hated the place and we didn't know why they hated the place. It was really weird because we have so many great experiences with it. Turns out he was there during a heat wave and didn't like the place because it was too hot. Um, you know, so take some of these uh, reviews on places with a grain of salt. How long were they there? What did they experience? Where did they stay? If you stayed in the industrial exactly. the town, you might not have had the same experience as being in the and the uh, old town or pedestrian area and you know some of the more favorable areas location 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 and when you have when you have this lifestyle i do look at reviews reviews for lots of different things we look at youtube channels we look at different things and that's really really clear because especially because i do the airbnbs i do our, our places to stay if i'm reading and maybe even the first one comes up and it's just a horrible horrible review i would never just leave i read the reviews and I say, oh, wait, this guy has complained about every single thing in this building, something that's his problem. Yeah. Because these people are all saying this, and maybe there's a little problem. Down. If three of them say the water out of the shower just drips, yeah. you got to go, yeah, you know what? There's probably a problem. Or the bed is extremely hard. No, do we uh, but when somebody's complaining about the whole situation, it's usually just because like we talked before, they're just not in a good space. They're not happy people, whatever it may be. Um, so you have to take some with a grain of salt, but you have to be aware. Well, just like anybody that owns a home anywhere in the world right now watching this place, do you have to ever fix something in your house? Sometimes things can go wrong. So mm -hmm. if you had a bad plumbing situation at the wrong time, um, you know, it, that, that could hurt, uh, hurt the review. Hopefully things got uh, fixed and repaired. So look at some of those things. But read between the lines. If you see reviews and all they talk about is a nice host and a nice location, odds are there might not be much good to say about the inside of the house. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, you know what? When we uh, when we got to here to this room that we're in right now in Saigon, we're basically it's a big apartment complex, an and, old building, and, and it's an old building, probably a hundred plus years old. And and to walk into our unit, you're walking through a garage with hundreds of motorcycles all around you, and it doesn't look that great. It's not very appealing. It's not very appealing. But when you go through, and then you find the elevator. And then you go upstairs and, and you it, open the door and you're like, and it's like, okay. it's exactly what the picture looked like. This is adorable. They did yeah. a great job, but, but you have to be willing to, to walk through all that stuff. Yeah. And even in the reviews, it said, if you can get past the initial, when you're walking up, you're going to love it when you get there, but not everybody can do that. They see the outside of the building and they go, oh, I'm not staying here. But when you travel the world, like we do, there's a lot of like here yeah. and yeah, you but- have to go inside. We, we, we've lost our U.S. goggles a long time ago of looking for <laughs> everything having to be clean and pristine. We don't see yeah. minor graffiti anymore or minor imperfections. No. In places. And, um, you know, we are, we also have and our, our, our mindset, the way we see things are so uh-huh. different. So when we're in an older communist uh, building area, we don't feel like, oh, this is ghetto or something where if we would have just got off the plane initially, we'd have been like, Oh, I don't know if I want to be walking around this neighborhood now. It's like, well, that's just normal life. And we will walk around these neighborhoods as though and not even be concerned. I know. Yeah. It's it's just crazy how you uh you change your mindset. <laughs> well, again, you, know, you call them US goggles, and it's a good word for I it. I love that because you know, we who are Americans, if you're watching this, we we live in a very blessed country. And maybe we have lived or gone through some areas that are not exactly sublime, but for the most part. America is pretty clean and you don't have to deal with things that a lot of other people all around the world have to deal with all the time. Um, And you got to understand, I mean, even something as simple as diet, we were going through uh, the Mercado the other day and, you know, there's brains out there and there's intestines out there and there's things out there that me personally, uh, not my jam, but to these people here, they'll eat it because that may be the only option they have and good for them that they have more of an open mind than we do. Oh yeah, there's horse on the menu here in Italy, which uh, is doesn't sound great. But hey, Norm, Kat, I'm going to have to uh, start wrapping this up. Our time here is going to be coming to an end soon. So as a reminder, everybody, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs, trying to see what it's like to live in different locations, places, sharing our experiences and expenses with you. We hope you're going to subscribe. Give this video a like and join us as we travel and share experiences with you as, you know, not only with uh, our experiences, other people's experiences, we'll share real estate information, residency information, we'll have our adventures. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for spending time with you again. Thank you. Ciao. Talk to you later.